to Newcastle. My next guest tonight was on the show earlier in the year, and I asked him back before the series ended because we all enjoyed him so much. He's most simply described as one of Britain's best and most versatile and best loved entertainers. Ladies and gentlemen, Roy Castle. <laughs> Yes, someone's been here before you, Roy. Yes, he's molted. Like, molted? Yeah. He molted all over me, too. <laughs> I've got spangles all over my trousers and things. Now, last time, uh, not too long ago, we talked about theatrical editions. We talked about your short-sightedness, didn't we? Yes, that's right. No, yeah. Let's continue the, the castle story. You, in fact, you passed uh, fitness tests for the military service, didn't you? I mean, how do you manage that with short, short, being short-sighted? Well, yeah, because uh, I've got the lenses in at the moment, but, but I couldn't see the, the number, the big letter, you know, the A at the top. So mm. it was an A. I didn't even know <laughs> that. But I couldn't see that, and I also had a double hernia, and I was past grade one. <laughs> and the war was over. The war was <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you enjoy national service, sir? Well, in retrospect, I think it was most important yeah. because it helped me to grow up amongst my own contemporaries and then go home as a, more or less a, a grown-up young fella, you know. But yes. I didn't like it at the time, obviously, because I thought, what am I doing here? But uh, for two years, uh, I was just uh, filling in ledges and filling up petrol, and I was, in the, so I was a storeman, non-tech, grounded. <laughs> and, uh, and I just did all that for two years, but at the same time, I learned the trumpet. I taught myself how to play the That's trumpet. Right. Yeah. Well, do you have as much room for humour in the in the force? I found the two years I had absolutely hilarious. Oh yeah, it was great. And... Nobody dare come. You see, I was I was the local barber as well on the camp. There wasn't a proper barber on the camp, and my granddad was a barber, and it taught me how to do it. So, that I used to cut the hair of everybody on the camp, for uh, it used to be uh, shilling, in those days. And it used to cost them half a crown to get into Aberdeen, see? So I was, I was well lucky. And they didn't complain about me practicing the trumpet. Otherwise, they got a rotten haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, I did all that. I did my security patrol. That's, uh, you know, the bit where you have to patrol the camp. With a pickaxe axe handle. That's it. The That's two right. of us. Yeah. The six of you, isn't it? That's each right. Each night. And, yes. the, and you're on for two hours and off for four. Yes. And you look forward to coming back to that big, thick sandwich <laughs> with, the, with the tea, strong, sweet tea. And then... <laughs> but uh, you, you know you have to do the, the old uh, parade first. You have to do the parade at six o'clock right. to salute the flag down. That's right. Well, on this occasion, we, we'd all trundled on with the packs on the back, all blank coat and all the brasses done, right there with all the haircuts and berets. And uh, we, was, we marched on to the parade ground like this, and uh, the audio officer says, right, salute the flag down, Sergeant. And they're all standing there, and he's saluting the flag. And the, uh, the policeman's got to pull the flag down, the RAF police, and, uh, you know, it's on the rope that goes round and round. So the flag's up there, and so he starts to pull this flag down. Now, there's a baby Alsatian on the camp that sees this rope going like that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I grabbed the rope, see. So he's still pulling the flag down now. <laughs> but the Alsatian's going up. <laughs> so the RFP, you know, I said, oh, what's up with you, man? <laughs> and the orderly officer said, get the dog down, get, get the dog down, see. So, so it comes down, and now the flag's gone up again. So. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, now the barrel was heavier than me. <laughs> and so he has another sister the dog, get out of it, get out of it, and does it again, and down comes the flag, the dog's in again, and up it goes, see? So he didn't know what to do. In the end, and, and the naffy's just over the parade ground, and all the lads, they've got the windows open going, yay! <laughs> eventually he's got this, you know how a dog can writhe, don't you? And he's got this dog's going, now, and he's pulling the flag down with one hand, and the orderly officer's like this. <laughs> It was, uh, you know, it's great days, great days. When we talked last time, we talked about your association with uh, Jimmy James. Uh, mm. But you, in fact, worked also with another great comedian, North Country comedian, didn't you? You worked with Frank Randall when oh, you yes, first started. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I read a book about him recently. He didn't seem to be a very appealing character. Would that be right? Well, he, he, was, he wasn't lovable, no. No, I must say. He was an extremely funny man. Yes. When he wanted to be. Yes. But uh, he used to take it out on a lot of the people in his company. There were, there were some guys there that really needed him uh, in all the sketches and things. And uh, 
and he used to lead them a hard life. I remember once he, uh, he, well, a lot of times he used to have a call after the show in the dressing room, and he used to have everybody sitting round, and I was just a young lad at the time in a musical act, and he used to, he used to start setting show business to rights, and you just had to sit there, and he used to have his Guinness and whiskey and stuff, and he used to be saying, the trouble with show business at the moment is, is everybody else, and there's all this going on. And eventually, he used to wait till the bottle was about that far down a Guinness, and he used to say, I'll show them what it's all about. I'll show them what it's all about in the end. And he'd pour it down, it used to run down, <laughs> yeah. and it was all macabre. And he meant it, you know, he really did hate the rest of the business. Really? He, mm. he was, of course, he, he once got into terrible trouble for, um, for criticising an audience, didn't he? Wood Green. Wood yeah. Green. Yes, he actually swore at him. Did he? And he tried to say afterwards, because it was an Italian scene, that he was saying basta basta, which is Italian for enough enough. <laughs> no. They did actually it? stopped us in the middle of the show. Did they? Yeah, he was having this argument and the manager came round and he, he had the curtain pu pulled down. So we were kicked out on the Wednesday night and on the Thursday they got a new show in that was rehearsing in London. And uh, they wouldn't let us go into the dressing rooms because they, they were all shut. That's it. You're not allowed in there. That's the new show in there. And our clothes and things were in. So we were stuck in the corridor. And one of the acts that was on uh, walked by and he said, don't open that door. Don't let that dog out of my dressing room. All right? Don't let that dog out of my dressing room. So, yes, sir. Yes, right, right. So we're standing there. And then my partner, Norman Teal, came in. He said, right. He said, we'll get the stuff out of the dressing room. I said, no, you're not to go in there. Because there's a dog in there, you're not allowed to let that dog out. So I said, who cares about his dog? He opens the door and the dog went, Shh. it's gone. Now, <laughs> now on the, you get the tannoy and all the music's coming across, you can tell that there's either acrobats or a juggler on. Because it's, this, it's the ritual fire dance. You could hear this going on the time. Then this dog comes back from the other side like this, and it's got a juggler's club in its mouth. And it goes in. It goes into this dressing room, like, rawr, 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 and it's heated this club, and, and, and the music stopped. Eventually, there's this irate juggler. says, what are you doing? Hey, there's a dog. He come, wow, wow, and he's juggling like that. The dog's up, woo. I know that you're looking forward later in the show to to a meeting. Well, you've met him already, but to talking with Buddy Rich, who was one of your. Your I'd great have, heroes. I'd have swept the studio to have been here tonight. <laughs> I know you were delighted when we oh. told that, uh, yeah. that he was on. But I mean, you, you, you're an a incredible mu musician yourself in the range of instruments you play. But um, you also, I know you, you, you like observing other musicians. You've had an, an awful lot of chance to do that in your time on the halls. What are the, the worst musician stories that actually happened to you? Because well, I love musician stories. Well, uh, I mean, it's, they're lovely, but so, some of the chaps that used to play in the pit orchestras just did it for pin money, really. And uh, the Musicians' Union at one time, they had a ruling that like in a summer season, um, if, if there was a band, say, at a seaside resort, they couldn't fill it with what you call session musicians. That, say, if there's 11 musicians in the band there, that three of them at least must be employed locally. Otherwise, they put the local lads out of business, you see, which is fair enough. And on this occasion, it's at Margate, and uh, the drummer was one of these lads. And uh, he'd, he was a, a local fellow, he'd be about in his 50s or so, and he'd got one of these big drum kits with, with black velvet over the front with a sunset painted on it. <laughs> and uh, the opening of my act was, I used to go to each musician, sing a bit, and they had to copy me. So I go to the drummer first. Right, then he's got to play that. And I go over to the bass player. So we got the two going. And then you go over to the saxes. Right, they, they join in. Then trombone. Then strings. There's only 11 in the band. Really. <laughs> <laughs> One of each. Right, yes, yes. <laughs> Piano and everything. <laughs> right, and then at the end, of course, I sing the phrase, I've got it all going, I sing the phrase to the trumpets, which is... Right, 
and they used to wave a white flag. <laughs> so that, was, that was where.